Hello everyone. Good morning, afternoon or evening depending on whichever part of the world you are joining us from. I hope all of you are having a great test flicks. Welcome to my talk on Kotlin for test automation. A quick word about myself. My name is Gaurav Singh. I'm a software engineer. I'm very passionate about software testing and test automation. I am a test automation university instructor and have previously spoken at Serenium, Appium and Automation Guild conferences. I also have a blog on software testing and test automation at automationhacks.io and I have recently started a newsletter and a YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe to these channels in case you want more content on software testing and test automation. Before we begin, who is this session actually for? If you are a software or a test engineer, you are familiar with Java and are curious about what Kotlin as a language can do, then this session is definitely for you. We are going to cover a bunch of Kotlin features and how they make sense for test automation. We will look over data classes, functions, uh, what are mutable and immutable types and make sense of these features as we go through. Before we begin, where can you find the code? So you can go to GitHub automation hacks and Kotlin for test automation repository and all of these code samples in their original and refactored forms would be present. If you prefer reading blogs, you can also go to automationhacks.io and search for Kotlin and you can find a couple of blogs that I wrote on the same topic. So with all of that out of the way, as Linus himself said, talk is cheap, show me the code. So let's dive right into our editor and start talking about this. So if you are coming from a Java background, then this sort of code is very familiar to you. It's your familiar Java bean, also called as a POJO, where you have a class which is essentially a data holder. This is very verbose code and of course writing this is no fun. In automation code, you can work around this by using Lombok plugin and make it more concise. But in Kotlin, this is something that's supported right out of the box. So let me just show you what the equivalent code in Kotlin looks like. I'm using the ID converter to convert this Java into Kotlin. And this is a feature that you can use when working with these hybrid code bases. So if you take a look at the converted code, this code is essentially similar to the one that you saw just earlier. We have name and age as two properties on the class. And that's about it. The code is much cleaner here. So now, assuming that you have this class and with two properties, how do you create an object? Well, you create it with the same way as you do in Java, but you can drop the new keyword. So essentially, I create an object of person and I directly just have person class object. Also, if I want to access a property in this particular class, I don't need to use get name or get age. Instead, we can just directly use the property name with person.name. I can just run this code and let's see if our assertions are correct. All right, so looks like this assertion was passed in Kotlin. Functions are first class citizens. What that means is functions do not need to be inside a class and can just be written in any Kotlin file. For example, I have a name parser.kt file and you can see that I have a function called parse name. It's not mentioned within a class and this is great for multiple reasons. In Java, if you had to create a function, you have to create a class around it. So I want to draw your attention to this function. What we are doing here essentially is passing a name, which is just a string, finding the position of a space in that string and then using a substring function to split the first and the last name out of it. Here we are doing something ugly wherein we are like wrapping it into a list so that we can pass it to whoever calls this particular function. In this case, we have the parse name function and then we are using list indexes to parse this name out. Now what's wrong with this piece of code? Readability is a big concern with this code and of course this code is very difficult to understand. However, we can very easily refactor this. So what we can do here is instead of using a list as a data holder, we can just use the class that we just saw, right? So we can create a class called as, let's say, full name and just add two properties. Let's call it as a first name, which is a string. Let's create a last name as another string. 
and that's about it and what we can do is instead of returning a list we can just retain an object of full name we of course need to change the return type which is let's say full name here and now instead of using this weird syntax we can just change this to let's say name dot first name and name dot last name much cleaner right also kotlin has string interpolation what that means is instead of writing a format string with format specifiers you can just write something like a dollar and specify the variable name and directly create your string out of this so in this case i've just printed the first and last name and we can see that on executing this code we saw jane do so this is cool let me show you another feature of kotlin so if i have another object let's say name one and i have essentially the same name let's try to say if they are equal so i'll say name and name one and let's just run this code so what it says is it expected this class but instead it got a different class now this is because the class that we have created is just a normal class and in case you want additional methods like equals and hash code the only thing you need to do is add data to this class and let me run this code again and as you can see it passes it's already way cleaner you can use this when you are writing api automation and want to create let's say representation of your request and response objects so instead of using a java class annotated with lombo you can simply use a data class all right so are we done with functions well not quite i still want to discuss couple of additional features around it so here we just have a string utils class and we have couple of overloaded methods so you can see we have a get first word method that takes a word and a separator splits it by that separator and just returns the first word that you get now in java typically if you want different types of separators or some default values one way of doing it is to you know overload it as another method and instead call the first method with a separator of let's say space well in kotlin we don't need to do it what we can do is give the separator a default value so we can give it a space and just remove this method and if we try to run the same piece of code hopefully it should work so yes we can get the first word out also we don't really need to use a class here as i mentioned so we can just get rid of this let's run the code and you can see it still works so now this is really good because you can create these sort of utility functions anywhere in in a kotlin file and not have to wrap it with a class now this code is already much more optimized than before but what if we wanted to take it a step further what if we wanted to say jane do and just wanted to call some method on top of it kotlin supports a syntax like this with something called as extension functions so let me just show you how that is done so essentially to define an extension function we define what type it should work on so i say my extension function should work on essentially a string type right and then i can just remove this and now instead of using word i can say work on this current object and i can just refactor this code to say jane do and get first word right let's run this code and you can see this works right now extension functions are really useful when you have to work with a third party library or code that you don't control so as an example could be let's say a different team had written a particular java object that you want to extend for some additional use cases you don't need to mess around with any sort of inheritance or creating a wrapper with objects and stuff you can use extension functions in this way and just write the extension that you want on top of that particular type in this example i have extended the string but you can also extend any other custom object that you have all right let's take a look at this piece of code so here i am trying to represent 
a element tree so something similar to a dom tree wherein you have a base class called as element and you have two child classes which is you have a container which can have one or more than one elements so you can see in case you want to have multiple elements you can use var arg and this of course inherits from the element class and you have another text node which can just have any string that is possible so here i'm trying to represent a hierarchy so you have a container a container has a text node with the text a and again another container which has you know another text and so on and so forth so this is just a nested sort of tree structure now what if i want to write a function that's able to extract some text out of it so in this particular case we want to extract all the leaf nodes and whatever is the node values from it so i call an extract text method let's take a look at what this is you can see that i've used extension functions and i've used extract text here and i'm just calling another function since this is a tree structure we need to use recursion to actually walk down the tree hierarchy and you have certain conditions here so if you have if it is text then you add the particular text inside your string builder and if it is a container then you basically iterate for each of its children and recursively call this function so this is a pretty common piece of code when you are working with xml or json hierarchies but what i want to basically show you is how kotlin idioms can simplify this code a lot so let me draw your attention first to this if block where we are checking if the element is a text then we are also casting it as a text so if i come here and i check you can see the id suggests that this cast is useless this is because we have already checked that e is type text and hence kotlin compiler knows that this is of this particular type so we can actually remove it and now if you see here we are basically just taking the element and then we are again assigning it to a variable which is of course not needed so we can inline this variable we can repeat the same refactoring here remove the cast and then inline this variable all right so the code seems a bit more readable now you can see that id also suggests that we can replace if with when and so when is a special construct in kotlin it's kind of similar to your java switch but then it can do so much more so i can just replace this with when and what you can see is this piece of code seems much more readable in case you have a single statement in a when clause you don't really need to have curly braces you can remove it so as you can see here we are just calling this extract text method inside this particular extension method so in kotlin you can have inner functions as well so we can basically nest functions inside a function so i can just define this functions inside now since this function is inside we can make use of the scope wherein we don't really need to pass string builder inside we can just declare it here as let's say string builder right and just remove this completely also remove the call to this inside and also remove this so this way we can actually hide our implementation when not needed let me just run this piece of code and as you can see we are still able to extract it so what we observe is just by applying kotlin idioms we can greatly simplify this code now one more thing that you know is container and text are essentially children of element and you know that you are not going to have multiple types so what you can do is you can actually make this class as a sealed class and once you do it this particular else condition in the when is not needed because you know that the only two types that are possible are text and container and so you can remove this and you can also run this code and see that it still works all right so i hope you enjoyed this talk and you learned a bit about kotlin of course this is just the tip of the iceberg and there are multiple things that you can do with kotlin and i would encourage you to take a look at the talks and learn a bit more and hopefully you will decide to use kotlin in your automation projects 
If you want to learn more, I would encourage you to check out these resources, the couple of blogs that I wrote. Also, this talk was inspired by a talk that Andre Breslav did on Google I.O. So I would suggest you watch that recording as well. And also this talk by Hadi Hariri is pretty nice. With that, we come to an end to the talk. Thank you for your time and attention. And in case there are any questions, feel free to reach out to me over LinkedIn or Twitter and I'll be more than happy to discuss them with you. Thank you.